And the UN Refugee Agency says the number of displaced people across the world has reached over 60 million and is rising. The UN Refugee Chief Antonio Guterres said Muslims make up more than two-thirds of refugees worldwide. He stressed on the importance of building a positive relationship between the Western and Muslim worlds. Guterres also underlined the importance of protecting asylum seekers, especially in light of Europe's refugee crisis. Top UN official also expressed concern over the vastly insufficient humanitarian budget. According to the UNHCR, the number of people being displaced around the world every day as a result of conflict has quadrupled from almost 1,100 in 2010 to over 4,200 last year. Well, to discuss that further, we're now joined Ms. Arzu Mirali, who is with the Islamic Human Rights Commission, and she's joining us live now via Skype from London. Ms. Mirali, thanks very much for joining us. Um, certainly a very sad thing to be hearing that most of these uh, refugees, of course, on any level are Muslims, um, and that would be sad for any group of people if they were to be named as, as the vast majority. But as a Muslim yourself and somebody who is an activist um, and part of this commission, um, how do you reflect on this sort of news? Well, unfortunately, this isn't really news, even at the time that IHRC was set up, and that was 18 years ago. We knew that somewhere between 75 and 80 percent of the world's refugees were Muslim. This was a fact that the United Nations repeats year in, year out, and it gives its statistics. So sadly, this is not a new phenomenon. Maybe there are different countries involved now. But it just shows that, you know, we are in a constant state of turmoil. And this raises serious questions about, A, our own capacity to deal with conflict, or why there is so much conflict. We don't seem to have been able to see how many external factors affect us, but also really to look at the kind of interventions that are creating this and to be able to respond to it is something that seems to be sorely lacking uh, at a national and international level when it comes to Muslim countries. Indeed, and you know, looking at the macro issue, obviously, of the humanitarian efforts or lack of um, by the global community, you know, um, Mr. Guterres there pointing out that, you know, the, the UNHCR's um, you know, budget is, is quite low, in fact, what it's working with. Why do you think that is in the face of the fact that, you know, we're seeing this quote-unquote refugee crisis in Europe? Ultimately, the money comes from nation states and refu or care for refugees has become increasingly less and less of a moral imperative worldwide. And this is very much coming through the shift in morality that a kind of very aggressive neoconservative agenda has led to in the last decade or so. It's no longer, there's no longer this kind of at least veneer of the idea that we are all brothers and sisters in humanity. It's now all about a very super, overtly supremacist idea of who is worthy. So whereas we did care about refugees, you know, in the Western world, you know, after the Second World War, after all the atrocities were committed, there was a kind of retrospective look back uh, and feeling guilty. We've forgotten that guilt. We've forgotten the need of it, at least in the Western world. And actually, what we're forgetting is the vast majority of these refugees are not turning up on the shores of Europe or North America. They're being you know, welcomed and looked after in countries who are often very poor themselves or under huge stress, for example, Lebanon, and are actually taking in people despite not having much themselves. I mean, North of Africa is taking in a lot of people who are having to flee Libya and so on and so forth. So there are sad lessons here to be learned, but the United Nations you know, really isn't taking enough of an aggressive stance and saying, to the rich nations, you know, cough up. You have a responsibility here. It's your interventions that are causing this turmoil. You need to be helping to look after, look after the people who are targeted by it, at the very least. Okay, we'll leave it there at that. But of course, Ms. Mirali, we do appreciate you taking your time to speak to us today. Those Ms. Arzu Mirali, who'd been speaking to us live from London.